Celtics 116, Warriors 100. Chris, I think sleep's going to be pretty hard to come by in the city of Boston tonight, but they're going to have to rest up because Game 4 is coming your way Friday night. I'm here with some Thunderbirds fans. Yeah, yeah. Guys, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? It's going to be loud tonight. Bring your earplugs. At the age of 44, Tom Brady formally announcing his retirement on social media. And with Game 4 potentially marking the last game of the season at TD Garden, tickets are sky high. In 2016, the city of Springfield nearly lost minor league hockey altogether. Now, six years later, the entire community is rallying around the Thunderbirds. You can just feel the opening day magic in the air. Baseball is back in Boston. UMass Minutemen season came to a close against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The goat, he was only out to pasture for 39 days before he broke the news last night that he's not done just yet. Running with the toys for the end zone. And the event started tonight at 6 p.m. at the Indiana Convention Center. I'm not sure if the out of bounds lines were observed there or anything. I mean, were, were there any penalties for roughing the passer? Oh, Don, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> that Belgian waffle at the end there with the blueberry yeah. on it. Yeah. It looked pretty good, didn't it? Yeah. It looked pretty good. First come, first serve, though. I don't know if I get up early enough to get a spot at Memos. <laughs> now, here's a day that'll get a lot of the viewers fired up at home. Today's National Nachos Day. Okay. It doesn't sound like you're too fired up. I'm <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with nachos. We talked about this earlier. I mean, the way you say it, it makes it seem like they're just a pleasant snack. <laughs> they're much better than that. If we're looking for any silver lining about it being the month of October, it's that we can put this miserable Red Sox season <laughs> yeah. to bed, finally. That's right. Three more. I'm Three guessing, more. guessing tickets won't be too expensive <laughs> if you're looking for one more shot to see them. Suburban South bragging rights in D4 playoff implications on the line in East Long Meadow tonight. East Long Meadow enter the day 12th in the state playoff rankings. Northampton on the outside looking in at 21. Game of the week. I say this one could be our game of the year. Lancers with the ball back. It's Bryant Lopez. He's bouncing outside the pocket. Picked off by sophomore Jack Casey. And Jack Casey, your reward? Yeah, take that turnover, Chain Young fella. Show it off to the cameras. Holyoke down a couple scores. How would they respond? It's Aramis Serrano. Deep throw. Check out this catch by Dimitri Gonzalez. Laundry coming in from the refs. It doesn't matter. Then pop in the pocket. All kinds of time. The one defensive lineman that's rushed him taken to the ground. Evanville Longo. Wait for this one here. Boom! Hit stick. 24 was all over the field tonight. The near pick six. Jake Robodell almost gets it until J.C. Cox rips it out of his hands. And he's going to take it to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Past the diving tackler. Touchdown. He just wanted to have a good time and make people smile. Robbie Everson. Better known as Monkey Man. He was the monkey boy. He uh, had some antics with monkeys. <laughs> the Monkey Man could be found at every Springfield Thunderbirds home game with his sidekick Jinx. If it wasn't for him, this place wouldn't be as enthusiastic as it is. It's the experience of coming to a game is what we're all about, right? And uh, he, he lived it and he breathed it and he loved it. On January 16th, Robbie passed away. He was 32 years old. Western Mass News had the chance to speak with him in 2021. It means so much to me. I met so many great people through here. I made so many great friends, and it's my home roots. Robbie and his grandmother would carry rally monkeys around their necks, picked up at one of the many Red Sox games the duo attended until his grandmother's passing in 2021. He went to the um, games with my mom, and... Uh... It was their special time together. He had to be there. He, he just absolutely loved it. The East Hampton native's home away from home was inside the Mass Mutual Center. Section 16, row A, seat 13. Conveniently positioned directly behind the visiting goaltender. Loudness, loudness, obnoxiousness, nothing but, nothing but good vibes. Fellow superfan Andrew Bushy sat right next to Robbie. We met and we just clicked clicked and the rest is history. T-Birds fans now carry monkeys of their own to keep his legacy alive. The team honored Robbie with a moment of silence and donated back the 50-50 raffle at a recent home game. It's just overwhelming. Everybody came up to us at that game um, after he had passed and telling us how much he affected their lives. To see the impact that a, a, a hockey franchise in a small town like Springfield can have, it just put a lot in perspective. And Bushy is selling t-shirts and bracelets in his honor. Now, after an appearance in the 2022 Calder Cup Finals, the T-Birds are playing for something more this season. Every single goal is for you, bud. Every single goal.
no Lobo soccer without Greg Kaloji, so I'm sure he's going to be it's back. Not, it's not a thing without him. I'm sure he's going to be back and winning the state championship next year. Last Thursday, Ludlow High School boys soccer coach Greg Kaloji suffered a major heart attack. He's been a part of the program for over three decades, filling trophy cases. He does so much for the community. He helps with like younger clinics around town. He does community service. He helps volunteer on everything, like anything around town. Kaloji's family tells Western Mass News he successfully underwent surgery on Monday, the first step in a long road to recovery. His team is banding together, sending their coach videos and sharing their support. We love you. Like this, everyone here loves you. We all want you to make it out of this, and we all want to see you like succeed even, even more than you already have. Greg's parents are both in the Ludlow Athletics Hall of Fame, including his father, Bill, who Ludlow Athletic Director Tim Brillo calls one of his mentors, and the family's impact stretches far beyond the field. From an AD perspective, that's what you want, that you know that he's created relationships that are meaningful with his, with his athletes. Greg's story has also captured the attention of local businesses, including EL Nutrition in Ludlow. We honored him this whole entire week with the Lions C. At the end of the week, we'll collect all those pictures, we'll make a huge collage for him. Greg's niece, Hannah, works at the Juice Bar that first developed a relationship with the team during their state playoff run this fall. This was his state championship jacket. I'm wearing it in honor of him. I had a lot to choose from. <laughs> we also spoke with former players stopping by to show their support. He's had such a successful coaching career because he's been able to motivate people and he showed me how to be a great leader. It really means a lot to all of us and it, literally he would not still be fighting today if it wasn't for everything that this community has done. Yeah.